is Ruel's Running Podcast, a podcast about running, health, family, play, and an NSNG lifestyle. And now, here's your host, Ruel. Excuse me as I rock on. That's Went Away by Dorothy Lane. Dorothy Lane out of Martinez, California. That's out of the Cut and Dry album. Check them out at DorothyLaneMusic.com. Yeah. Hello, welcome to another episode of Ruel's Running Podcast. How's everybody doing? This is your host, Ruel Abadam, and I'm uh, feeling okay. How are you guys? Hope everything's going well. If you are a new listener, welcome to the podcast. I hope you uh, get as much out of it as you uh, put into it, as far as uh, how much you how much you you, you purchase it. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. But yep, it it's worth every dollar you put into it. And if you are a return listener, I uh, I really appreciate you guys coming back and checking things out. Yeah, so what's going on? A lot has happened since uh, the last episode. Yep, I tell ya. Whew, man. You know, the family and I went on a vacation. And uh, I mentioned it previous episode. Yeah, we went to uh, Southern Cal. So if you are a new listener, I live in Northern California, the San Francisco Bay Area. I've been living here for... I want to. Say, I want to say maybe since 1996, um, and uh, yeah. So uh, my wife and I and the kids, we drove down for the kids' spring break. So my wife and I took time off, and uh, my wife booked uh, some activities. You know, we are uh, we are annual pass holders uh, for the second time, and this past spring break trip was the second time we utilized or the second trip we utilized the the passes which is great it costs a whole bunch of money because Disneyland costs a whole bunch of money and uh but you know with that cost of a whole bunch of money comes at least for our family comes with uh you know a little bit of a um I don't know if peace of mind is the way, right way to describe it. It comes with a little bit of a, you know, let's not stress out so much sort of, ex, of an experience. Um, yeah, what does that mean? Well, you know, when you go for a day, you get a ticket or whatever, uh, or multi-day ticket, and let's say you, uh, you, I mean, you have to pick. Are you going to be able to have park hopping options, you know, between the Disneyland Park or the California Adventure Park. You know, there's two separate parks, you know. So hopping means you'd be you have the option to go from one to the other within I guess the day. And the other is, you know, no hop option, right? You pick a park on a particular day. If it's a multi day ticket, you can only stay at one park for the day and then the following day, you can choose to go back to the same park, or you can choose to go to the other park. But you, whatever park you choose, that's what you're stuck with for the day, right? And, um, you know, there, uh, you may feel like you want to cram in everything on a particular visit because you, you, you do have limited flexibility. But, you know, with the annual passes that we have, we're able to. You know, hop from park to park within the day. Should we want to do that? And uh, we know that you know we still have the rest of the trip, and it was a whole, basically a whole week to uh, attend a park. So we didn't have, to, we didn't feel we needed to rush through stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that's that. And uh, you know, um, our first the. On, our, on the first visit of uh, at the park, we opted for the California Adventure Park. And, you know, 
from the get-go see a celebrity. Actually, my wife saw it. I guess classify as two. I only saw one. It was the the Lachey's. Uh, I saw Nick Lachey. You know the uh, I guess you would call the front the front man of the the boy group or the the, the group ninety eight degrees. He was with his family. His wife is is a celebrity in her own right now. I mean, they have I think what, two kids and. Uh, yeah, we're just walking through the park, and I'm like, oh, first, uh, you know, first sighting, I'm like, oh, there's Nick Lachey, just sort of like blurted out, you know, kind of nonchalant or whatever. And then I realized what had, what I had said, and then I was, then I was suddenly in kind of a bit of a shock, like, hey, there's Nick Lachey, and I was as if I was trying to really, really point it out to my wife. At that point, she was like, like, shh, keep it down or relax or don't, don't point, you know, none of that stuff. It was funny. Uh, so she saw first the the uh, the this Disney staff in the plaid vest or whatever escorting them through. She, then she saw uh, Nick Lachey's wife. I don't know her name because I don't pay attention. And he, she happened to notice her, and then made sense. She saw Nick Lachey. I don't know why I keep saying Nick Lachey. I can see the whole name, <clears throat> but she saw them as well, and. Uh, I don't know. It was kind of cool, you know. It it was it wouldn't have been the first time. It, it's not the first time I've seen stars and celebrities in that area, you know. Other stars I've seen were uh, Tyrese. What's his name? Tyrese Gibson. And I saw what's his name? Ryan Reynolds. They didn't get a glimpse of his wife or newly new wife at the time, but saw him. Um, who else? Uh, saw Trav. Was it Travis Barker, the drummer of uh, the, the band 112 or something along those lines? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, sad thing was the following day we were, I mean, a couple days later, we were we went to the same park and we stayed at one end of the park. And when we left for the day, we uh, learned that the part of the park that we weren't at, um, there was this big sort of charity celebrity activity going on where the cast of uh, Avengers Endgame were were at. So it was like, oh, shock! You know, we totally missed them. What a bummer. Um, but at the same time, not a bummer because from the pictures we've seen, we saw there was a really dense crowd around all of that. And uh, no, no thanks. <laughs> no thanks. But yeah, that was a little bit of a of a, the trip. The other thing we did was there's this thing in uh, Orange County called the Discover- Discovery Cube. And we've been there before. And we were there again. And basically for the same sort of activity. There was a show. They have this thing called Bubble Fest. And they have a show around Bubble Fest. Um, which is a fantastic Bubble Fest show. Uh, there's a duo. Brother and sister duo. They basically do... A tremendous bubble show, tons of bubbles, massive bubbles, bubbles with within bubbles and bubbles within bubbles, and and smoke rings and smoke balls within bubbles, and so much stuff, right? And uh, yeah, and, and this year, my daughter got a chance to participate in the show. You know the. The, the show folks were, were look, looked for volunteers you know first was a small boy to get on the stage and and then at second was a small girl and my, my, my daughter raised her hand and she got picked and the idea was to get the, the, the boy and the girl close enough together and uh, the performer would encase them momentarily in a gigantic bubble and it was wonderful to see you know, her on stage in front of the, the audience and everything. And they both got these gigantic jugs of bubble solution and stuff uh, to take with them after the show. But it was crazy good. Um, you can probably find it, find YouTube videos of the, of the, uh, of the show. Um, but yeah, it was, it was fun. Um, and uh, that's that. I'll pick up where I left off. Maybe talk about some running, maybe. Maybe some nutrition, maybe. Okay, so 
I'm back. And um, that was uh, that was that update. So <clears throat> come back from the spring break, and pretty much, uh, I guess you were gonna say it's spring. And as far as running's concerned, you know, I hadn't. I mentioned it before. I hadn't done a whole lot of running, but coming back from from uh, the trip, and when I finally finally got back to the office, took care of some some really complicated things around vehicle main, maintenance, and took care of stuff around um, you know tax filing and whatnot. I really hate that stuff, you know. The one thing I really hate more than vehicle maintenance is tax calculations, tax filing, and all of that stuff. Ugh. So anyways, you know, finally got back to the office uh, when when all was said and done, uh, away from the office and from vacations. And, and by the way, you know, family got sick during vacation, so it uh, wasn't the most energetic of times despite all, despite all of the, the fun stuff. So... But we made it through it. And uh, so then fast forward, I'm back in the city doing some work and decided to do uh, my first run of the spring and my first run since the company had moved into a new office. And man, it was a gorgeous sunny day and I just needed to get out. I I hadn't ran for, I don't know, it felt like two months. And here we are, I'm like, I need to really get some, some, uh, some level of conditioning back because in about a month or so, I'm going to, and I have yet to register, I'm going to run the Ohlone 50K. And that one is going to be, uh, intense. You know, last year was, uh, wasn't a hot one. It was the coolest in, in its history from what I understand, so... I'm counting on it going back to its normal sort of conditions for this year. So counting on it being a hot one, I need to be prepared to burn on in the in in on the trail. It uh, cuts through I uh, was it four wilderness parks. Anyways, so you know, so I uh, you know I did one run on one day, you know. Don't want to spend an hour and a half out, you know. And and when I run in the city, it's it's not like it's not trail. It's all paved, but it definitely is. You know, there's a bit of a you know San Francisco hills, the climb up and up up the hills and in uh and stuff and down. And so that that gives it a level of a uh, of a uh, difficulty, I suppose. The other challenge isn't so much running it's more like having to deal with weaving through or or stopping for traffic and once i get out of the financial district i'm pretty okay everywhere else you know but uh it was me sort of rediscovering uh or discovering uh a different san francisco you know for almost a couple of years i've been running the same sort of stuff then when the office moved that it just put me in a different mindset you know i could uh Pretty much, I start off in a new place, and I figure I'm gonna end it, end it with it hitting a different route, and it's kind of cool, kind of cool. And uh, so that's where I'm at. You know, I did a, I did a, the following day. I did another run, uh, not as long. I, uh, uh, it was just an hour, and uh, but it was it was a bit more intense. And what I didn't mention was the night before. The first run of, I guess I'm calling the first run of spring, for, of, um, I did a a leg a leg session where I did a you know a series of lunge sort of exercises. I don't even know what to call them. I just do them. I don't even know what to call them. You know, um, weighted with weights and without weights, and you know, and you know, different, diff, you know, single leg, double leg, you know, just putting some work on the legs and uh, then some good stretch so that was the night before followed by the first run of the spring and then following by the second day so I'm really I'm really starting to feel the fatigue in the legs just because I'm out of shape 
but uh, at the same time, I feel good. I feel good that I'm I'm putting in some some level of intentional work. <laughs> I, I just I just need that change. It's it's been a long time coming. There you go. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at as far as running and exercise. And you know, I came back from uh, the vacation and I had eaten a whole bunch of garbage during vacation. I mean, tech, I literally just was like, I don't care mode, you know? I, uh, I bought like, from some like gas station store on the way to Southern Cal, I picked up like three canisters of Pringles, right? I haven't had Pringles in, oh my God, over 10 years. I'm like, I'm gonna get these because maybe the kids will like them or something, I don't know. Just, or maybe I'll like them. I just started just trying to figure out how much I don't care at that point. And, and it's just little by little, you know, ate one. It was like a jalapeno flavored. I'd never had that before. It's new to me. Jalapeno, jalapeno cheese or something. I had that one. It was a tall canister. And then over the course of, I don't know, a few days, I had just finished it. And I was like, okay. Then I was like, I'm going to have this other one. It's the cheddar one. <laughs> right? Uh, cheddar something. <laughs> and then over a period of less than a, a few days, uh, le- you know, I devoured that one. Then all that was left was the plain, regular old classic Pringles that I devoured that one. So bad. So bad. It's not good for me. It's not good for you. But it would taste good at the moment. So, you know, I was worried, you know, I was like, oh, I'm just really in un- in optimal mode through this whole thing. And, uh, but, you know, when I got back from the trip, I was at home. I had to work from home for, because I was recovering from stuff. But I just immediately went back to regular mode. And regular mode meaning, like, in a work day, you know, have my coffee, have my heavy cream, work through the day, you know, work past lunch, then realize later on in the day, maybe past 4 o'clock, okay, it's time to maybe grab something to eat, you know, and just go in SNG, you know, just have the meat, have the veg, whatever it is, have some, you know, snack on some, some cold cuts and some cheese, you know. And, you know, next thing you know, it's like, oh, look, I'm down two pounds. Sure, it's just two pounds. It's probably just inflammation and water weight and all that stuff just kind of subsiding. You know, Piana, Piana, a keto, a keto stick. And it's like, oh, yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm dumping ketones. So my body's still making ketones or it's dumping ketones. So I'm not completely out of it. Um, probably if I peed on a stick during the trip, I, I wouldn't have measured any level of purple but you know it's just it's just a it's just a reminder that I can blow a whole week but if I just go back get back into it in, in a couple of days I'm not too far f- from from getting back you know to proving that I can flip back to uh, some sort of uh, fat adapted key, ketogenic mode right it's just that's good because it's been, I don't know, four or five years of, of it all. And I tell people I've been, you know, I've been, I've been trying to keep myself, uh, you know, fat adapted, ketogenic, whatever you want to call it. Just keeping my blood sugars, you know, overall throughout the months and the, and the months and the years in check and not making high high sugar uh the standard the the normal mode and uh you know knock on wood it keeps me keeps me better than i know that i uh i would have been had i not made the shift i don't know let's call it five years five years ago but yeah so um yeah it's back at it uh looking forward to uh you know, just trying to make changes, you know. I'm kind of at this point where after I deal with tax season and stuff, I'm now, and spring's kicked in, you know, you know, some important birthdays come in in the month of April. I want to sort of celebrate those. And it's almost like, it's almost like a new year, you know. 
like celebrating New Year and trying to come up with, make up with <coughs> resolutions and changes and stuff. That's my daughter in the background, by the way. So I'm going to call it. That's pretty much it. It's going to be another quick episode. Um, so on behalf of myself, Royal Abaddon, and my daughter, who's anxious to go, uh, go out, you know, eat something delicious, hug your friends, hug your family, and go run something. Bye, Daddy, bye. I love you, bye. Thanks for listening to Ruel's Running Podcast with Ruel. If you like what you just heard, share it with your friends and your enemies. Also, be sure to check out the site over at ruelsrunning.com. This has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production. Join us next time for another silly show of Ruel's Running Podcast. Yeah, I-